Good morning. Good day. Hope you see things my way. Um, that's an old song from like Foreigner or Bad Company. I don't know. Uh, I have been out of commission for quite some time. And to be honest, I have been really, really wrestling with myself, with my beliefs, with my hopes, and my fears, hardcore fears. I have been really depressed. It's been hard. I'm not freaking kidding. I, I adore summer. I like waking up and seeing the sunrise, but I'm waking up at 4 a.m. running through the house or slamming doors or finding myself in another room or out <clears throat> right in my doorway. I'm having, I'm not, I'm not meditating enough, so my night times are fretful. My sleep is not <laughs> refreshing. And and I'm recognizing all these things. This used to be my deal and I didn't know what to do. And so then I would be angry with myself for feeling these ways. And I would be judgmental. And this has been this process these past few months of practicing radical acceptance of my feelings. So instead of being like, I'm so depressed. Why do I have to be so depressed? This is so stupid. I'm so stupid. Which is honestly the mind trap that I'm stuck in most time. Um, instead of that, I'm, I'm asking questions like, first off, I'm saying this is hard. This is scary. I've never done any of this. I'm, I am afraid. This is all new. I am on my own. And then I have, you know, I have, I have to start asking questions and becoming an observer and looking at my life in ways where I'm looking for all of the good things that I've done before I could pull out about five million things that I've done wrong and just keep listing them and saying why I'm so bad and why I don't deserve to be happy and why I deserve to feel so bad. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's become this process where I'm forgiving myself for mistakes I'm seeing when I'm mis making mistakes and I'm not kicking myself for it anymore. I'm giving grace. I'm also going through experiences with relationships and trying out new relationships, new experiences, and seeing how I've been taught to tolerate and mind read. And I don't really want to do that stuff anymore. I don't want friends that I have to read their minds to know what's going on. I'd like them to just be honest and speak with me. And if I've offended them, I want them to say so. I want to be able to apologize and correct my behavior. And I want relationships with people like that. So I'm finding out that I am stronger than I thought. Winnie the Pooh, you were right. Or was that Christopher Robin? I don't know. I'm stronger than I thought. I am very much braver than I thought. I'm more creative than I thought. Even though, let me just say real quick, the stretch of time, I have not been able to be creative. And that in itself, to me, is like this big red flag. I think, oh no, there's something wrong with me. I'm not creative. <sighs> <clears throat> But not being creative is actually being in the shutdown phase of 
the pair uh, of the vagus nerve. So I'm not in safe and social because I'm actually feeling like I'm in survival. So I'm not in safe and social. I'm really not in fight or flight because I don't feel like fighting anyone and I don't feel like running away and hiding. I'm in shutdown. Shutdown is where we all are because we can't really be mingling like we want to, although there are people who are doing it anyway. And then I'm in shutdown also in the fact that I'm really sad. I'm feeling lots of emotions. These emotions are huge. I'm having to teach myself self-regulation. When I have these big emotions, I, I've got to come in and be this loving parent to myself and be like, if I'm here, it's okay. You're this age, you're okay. I have to go through that. Pardon me. Oh, I have to go through this to educate my inner self, to empower her, and to strengthen my parenting skills. Because if I can calmly meet my own enormous catastrophic emotions, then I can do it with my kids. And they need that horribly. <laughs> when a kid is like exploding with feelings, they need a calm parent. They need a parent who can be like, I'm here, I'm listening, I'm not judging, I'm with you, we're safe. Because a child needs to come up out of, if they're in shutdown, they have to come up out of fight or flight, so now you're going to get fighting with you, or running away, hiding, whatever. They need to do that in order to get up into safe and social. So. <clears throat> kind of jumping around here, but this is, it's for me, and it also is for my kids, and it also works out in the world. Um, inflated emotions, huge, big emotions, big feelings, need to be met with calmness. They need to be met with compassion. They need to be met with kindness. Not matched. Like, Imagine if you're, you have an emergency. Oh my God, my arm, it's bleeding. You know, you run up to the emergency personnel and you're like, my arm is bleeding. And the EMT is like, oh my God, my arm's bleeding too. Get it? You don't, you don't meet a kid with inflated emotions when the child has emotions that are inflated as well. You don't meet a kid with, Oh, I have that too. I know what that's like. Don't worry about it. You don't meet a kid with, um, you're worrying about nothing. It's nothing. Just go play. You know, those are, you you minimize, you minimize what they feel. You minimize what they believe. And then you tell them it was about nothing. You gaslight them. And if you do that to your kids, you're doing it to yourself too. You're like, it's not, it's nothing. I shouldn't be feeling this way. I need to get over it. Now you just bulldozed yourself, minimize your feelings and gaslit yourself. So self-parenting, parenting your kids, parenting your friends, if you will. I don't see why you parent your friends, but just be a good person. Um, meeting, meeting yourself calmly when you've got huge emotions, meeting your child calmly when they've got huge emotions, meeting your neighbor calmly when they have huge emotions can help them calm down and come to conclusions on their own. You don't need to fix anything for them. You can just trust that they can figure it out. If they can't figure it out, they'll ask you for help. It's just a matter of listening and being there for ourselves. So that's what I've been up to. I've been busy, busy, busy fixing this making this healthy, making this feel loved, cared for. Um, we started the school year. Uh, I was going to put the kids into a Montessori school until I saw the $40,000 tag. And then I realized, you know what? 
I'm just going to homeschool my kids and give them as much as possible, as much as I can. So we got a zoo pass after we found out that there are some endangered species being protected there and taken well care of. And uh, we've spent three days there now already. We'll probably be there again today or tomorrow. And uh, I'm meeting the kids with calm as much as I possibly can and with patience. And when I know that I don't have it, I'm saying to them, um, I need some time. I don't think I can give you 100% of what you need and I want to be able to give you what you need. So could you give me a few minutes to gather myself and do it right? And when they hear me say that, they aren't so demanding and they're more understanding. Another thing I'm finding out real quick though is for over five years in therapy, I've been saying to my therapist, I can't get my kids to help around the house. I can't get them to help me. They don't want to help me. They just make me clean the house and do it all myself. And they make the messes and they need to help. Well, my therapists were gentle and they met me with calm and they met me with patience and they didn't throw it at me and say, if you don't get going, you're going to fuck up your kids. And they didn't say things like, uh, the way you're doing it is so wrong. They were just patient. Try this. Try that. Know that children need to have schedules. Know that children do well with routines. Know that children need consistency. They need to know what they can expect out of you. They need to understand consequences. And these things kept coming in and just sort of boop, 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 falling off of me. I had been taught how to parent. To control. You just control them. Period. They obey. If they don't obey, they get punished. They do not have their own autonomy. You lead them. And that was what I was that was my understanding of parenting and that's what I did with my kids although I still treated them as equals and valued their opinions but <clears throat> not enough and I have had to apologize to them for that all the older kids I have and I've tried to make it right for them by being honest and meeting them with request of forgiveness, um, specifics, like pointing out where I know I went wrong. Uh, but with these younger kids now, showing them that I value their opinion and the older ones, they feel that and they feel a sense of confidence. Mom believes in me, and I know it's just mom though, but if mom believes in me, maybe somebody else can believe in me. Maybe I could believe in me, you know? Whereas you just kind of don't be there with them, don't be, just be there with them, but don't be their parent, just leave them to their own devices let them figure things out on their own and stuff. You you run into trouble. Am I making any sense? You have to like lead by role modeling. You can't be expecting them to be nice all the time if you're not nice all the time. And you can't expect them to be respectful if you're not respectful. And so, like, I was, I, I do want to, I do want to change subject here because it, it's pretty important. I'm noticing that in this deep shutdown phase, this concern for finances, concern about everything worldwide, 
there's so much going on out there. We, we're getting rumors of such bad things. My forgetfulness has been huge. My forgetfulness has been so big. And it, it's actually alarming. I forgot a really important appointment. And within a week, I forgot another very important appointment. And even though I had um, alarms, <laughs> even though I had it posted up in front of my computer, I still missed an appointment. Um, I had another appointment that was at in the morning. It was a hearing, and I was supposed to be online at 8 a.m., I had my phone wake me up at 7, then 7.30. I woke at 7, saw the alarm, and thought, oh, that's not until next week. I can calm down. That's next week. And I went back to sleep. And I missed that appointment. Um, even yesterday... Things are moving, moving fast. I've got a lot of things going on. I don't want to even name them. There's so many. And uh, missed another appointment. And I had alarms. I had reminders. I, I set those aside to do something else and forgot long enough, like hours, like I didn't remember a 10 o'clock appointment for yesterday until three yesterday afternoon. And I have schedules. I have a schedule. I have my Google calendar on my phone. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to meet these dates and these times and I'm really failing. So back to that being hard on yourself. I'm a perfectionist. It doesn't look like it. I'm My home isn't a perfectionist's home. I am, though. I see my failures. I see my dimples. I see my scars. I see my mistakes. So this has been really hard for me. Accepting that I am losing memory. And that I'm having a hard time keeping track of appointments and dates and times that are super important that can change my life can change the course of my children's lives these are the kinds of appointments that I am supposed to make and meet and I miss them and it helps me see how badly I've been hurt it helps me see that I am healing, but it has been really hard, and admitting that I'm forgetful is embarrassing because it feels like I'm a fool, I'm an idiot. How could anybody forget something so important? It could be like missing your wedding day, you know, but yeah. I'm like Dory. And, uh, it's a little scary. But it's a side effect of CPTSD, which is complex post traumatic stress disorder, I believe. And, uh, it is something that I do have. And it is a symptom from long-term abuse. And I'm coming to terms with that. But it hurts. And I am applying for Social Security unemployment. Uh, sorry, disability. Because I am not functioning correctly in this society. And I fail meeting the standards of what it wants I can't do it I can't seem 
to do it well. Not the way it's set up. So yeah, perfectionism is a draining, exhausting way of thinking. Expecting anyone to do well the first time or the second time or even the 15th time is cruel. And we need to be more accepting to others and meet each other with calm, not catastrophe. We need to be loving to ourselves so that we are loving to others. And most of all, ugh, we need to be forgiving to ourselves. Because we make mistakes and we're going to make mistakes. And what better way to learn and base off future successes than by using the mistakes that we made? Like we just erase those mistakes and pretend like they never hurt, happen. We'll never learn anything for ourselves. We'll just stagnate. I'm Alexis. The Dolly Mama's podcast is your, no, it's Dolly Mama. Um, I've got a YouTube page here. If you could like and subscribe, I'd enjoy that very much. Um, check, to check out my other videos. and I have another podcast called I Believed What? With a question mark and an exclamation point and a question mark again. It's based off of the religious stuff that I used to actually adhere to and follow. And uh, my website is the hyphen Dalai Lama. Ooh, let's try that again. The hyphen, which is the little dash. The Dalai, D A L A I. Mama, M O M M A dot com. And you can see my, my blog and pictures and uh, get a sneak peek at the book that I'm working on and some other projects that I'm also working on. And uh, maybe learn a little bit about the mother wound if you were interested in it. Like and subscribe there too, if you will. And I'm on Facebook too as your Dolly Mama and myself. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, it's 9-11, pretty uh, Memorial Day, everyone has a story, and we're in the middle of a pandemic, so be nice to yourself, seek out being safe and social, if you feel yourself in fight or flight, find somewhere to go and feel it, don't take it out on others, if you're down and shut down, Seek companionship. Hold a cat. Don't hold it down, though. Just, you know, pet a cat. Um, be nice. Be nice to yourself. And be nice to others. Be a good role model. Be safe and social. <laughs>